so to make this a little bit more concrete, we're going to create like our own um, priority queue that's going to serve as like a to-do list. Um, so it's, it's going to be a to-do list of things that, that we need to do, um, but it's not going to just be a queue of to-do lists. We're going to actually have different priorities for different tasks. Um, we're going to use a class that I already wrote to uh, in, as part of this live coding, and that's the work order class. You may remember from yesterday that we said elements that we add to a priority queue, their class must implement the comparable interface. This does implement the comparable interface. Um, and so our work order class defines a priority, which is an integer and some sort of a description. Uh, we've got a constructor to make it easy to build new objects. We have a two string method. So when we print it, we can tell what's going on. And as required, we implement the compare to method. Um, and we use the priority to determine which task, which work order in our task list comes first. Um, the lower the number, the higher the priority. So think like priority one, that's like we do first. And then we do priority two and then seven and then whatever. So we're going to use this class as we work through our priority queue stuff. So let's let's try that out. So we're going to create a priority queue of to-do items. Here's the thing, a pri the priority queue implements the queue interface. So again, with best practice, we want to keep the type of our variables um, as high up in terms of like the inheritance tree as possible um, to provide flexibility. So I'm going to say the type of my variable is a queue of work orders. But I'm actually, and we we'll call that queue, but I'm actually going to create a new priority queue. Because the methods we use on the priority queue are exactly the same as the methods we use on the regular queue interface. So having the type as a, a queue doesn't limit us in either way. Um, and this way, if later we decide to change this class out, I don't have to change any other code. All right, so let's uh, decide what's on our to-do list. So we're going to add to our queue a new work order. And the priority is going to be three and you are asked to vacuum. Yeah, let's, let's get your home clean. Excellent. You may notice here that this is a priority queue being created by a parent, not by you. So vacuum is priority three. All right, other things that are important. Let's add another item. We'll make a work order. Uh, priority will be two. It's a little more important, and that is to water plants, because if you don't, they're going to die. If you don't vacuum, eh, you could wait a day, whatever. Um, another priority item. We can have multiple items with the same priority. They'll just be come out of the queue based on the order added, I think, rather than um, the priority itself. But we'll find out here in a second. So let's make a new work order. Um, actually, the order might be random. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, priority uh, two again, so we can test this theory. Uh, make dinner. That's pretty important. You're going to get hungry. Got to eat. Um, other things that are important. Um, let's do a new work order. Priority, another priority two item, also very important. You need to walk the dog. Um, like I said, these are, this is like a parent priority queue. So we're going to make a new work order um, and we're going to give a priority nine to play video games. There we go. And finally, um, oh, I know this is, re this is relevant. Most importantly, so I, I'm going to interject and add priority one is going to be to take the chapter 15 practice quiz. Okay, that, just to be clear, that's like not more important than like walking your dog and making dinner, but that's okay. And what you gotta water the plants too, yeah, but I'll pretend. All right, so like there's our, our priority queue. 
So what I want to demonstrate with you now is we're going to remove all the items in the queue and we're going to see what order they come out as, okay? Um, because if it was a normal queue, they should come out of the queue in the order we added them to the queue. Uh, first in, first out. Um, but let's see what actually happens. We'll say while queue.size is greater than zero, while there's stuff in the queue, print whatever we remove. And that's going to call the nice two string method. So go ahead, type this, compile this, run it. Let's see what the output is. What's the order as things are removed? What if two things have the same priority or multiple things have the same priority? We have three items of priority two. What order are they going to come out? Let's, uh, let's find out and take a look. So I'm going to run this two just near the bottom so you can still see all the code. So you'll see it came out, make dinner, walk dog, water plants. They all have the same order and it's not the order they are put in the queue, it's just the same order. Um, I'm not positive, but I believe the reason for that is the elements in the priority queue basically get sorted using the sorting algorithm based on the priority. And when two elements say that they're equal, like in our case have the same priority, which one ends up coming first isn't predictable, right? It depends upon the sorting algorithm. So that's why I don't think we can have any, any plan which one's going to come first, water plants make dinner or walk dog. Um, if that was important in some way, then we should modify our implementation of compare to to reflect that um, and perform the sort that we, uh, we expect. So.